to an academy it is india's largest learning platform today we are going to be discussing the pyqs from uh, anesthesia in ini ct my name is dr janvi and we are going to be doing all the pyqs that have been asked till now not just in both the years ini ct but also aims and gipmer exams previously okay so uh, this is our telegram channel where i post the links to all my classes and the plus subscription on our academy will help you get the best of an academy in the form of question bank printed notes and live classes the iconic subscription between an academy and prep ladder will help you get the best of both and uh, our special classes have all these features if you guys would uh, like to join any of these batches the clinical case discussions and instruments batch the target neat pg 2022 batch the target next 2023 batch uh, you can message me and i will share my code with you guys this is my code dr janvi live which will help you get a 10% extra discount on your subscription value so let's begin with our questions so the first question was one which was recently asked in ini cet i will be giving you guys 15 to 30 seconds each to answer all of these questions no answering in the chat box because i want everyone to assess how their preparation is for the exam okay so identify this position Trendelenburg, reverse Trendelenburg, lithotomy, jackknife, or lateral decupedis position. Please answer only in the poll and not in the chat box. This will have all the questions related to anesthesia from the past five years papers, okay? And not just INI CET, but also AIMS and JIPMER papers. All right. So most of you know the answer to this. So trend, this is not Trendelenburg position. Okay. There is a lot of confusion between this and reverse Trendelenburg. So in Trendelenburg, the patient's head will be down. Remember this. Okay. In reverse Trendelenburg, the patient's head will be up. So sometimes they ask you, what is the position in which you will have a raised ICP? Raised intracranial pressure will be in which Trendelenburg or reverse Trendelenburg? Yes, absolutely correct. Lithotomy position, we know that it is given in gynac, so both the legs are on stirrups. The favorite question about lithotomy that they ask is, what is the most commonly injured nerve in case of lithotomy position? So can you guys tell me? Yes, it is the common peroneal nerve because it is on the lateral side of the leg. Jackknife position is given for hemorrhoidectomy. One leg is over the other and the perineal area is exposed. And lateral decubitus means patient is sleeping on one side down. Okay. That is your lateral decubitus. Moving, so if you look at all these positions, I'll quickly write down for you. This is supine. This is Trendelenburg. This is reverse Trendelenburg. This one over here is lithotomy. This one is right lateral. Whatever side is down, uska lateral side hota hai, okay? So this is right lateral. F1 over here is called as the kidney position. Why is it called kidney position? Because there is a break in the table over here. And the kidney becomes obvious, the upper kidney, so you can operate on the kidney over here. Okay. This one again is your kidney position. H is your prone position, and I is your beat chair position. Only two more questions regarding this. In prone position, what is the most common injury that you see? And in beat chair position, what is the most disastrous complication that can occur? Yes, in prone position, you have to be particularly careful about the eyes. So you get eye injury and in beat chair position. Yes, in beat chair position, venous thromboembolism is the most worrisome complication that we are bothered about. All right. Okay, moving on to the next question. Identify the equipment, nasal cannula, NIV, HFNC, CPAP. If you guys are going to get all these questions correct quickly, I will start explaining the answers also so that we can move on to the next question. Okay. So this one over here, as you can clearly see, it's very easy to identify. It's basically your high flow nasal cannula. That is the full form. Can anyone tell me the maximum FiO2 given with high flow nasal cannula? Maximum FiO2 given? Yes, so you can give up to 100% of oxygen through the high flow nasal cannula. And when they say high flow, how many liters of oxygen can you give through this? You can give up to 70 liters of oxygen per minute. Okay, so you will see over here, this is the flow meter. 
okay and from the flow meter you have this big big tubings going out how to remember this just see there are big big tubings going out and this comes to a box like thing here which is the humidifier from the humidifier the air gets warmed and humidified the oxygen coming from here gets warmed and humidified and it is then carried through this pipeline into the nasal cannula so it's ending in the nasal cannula over here okay understood so this is the presence of your hfnc now anyone quickly tell me nasal cannula maximum fio to achieve nasal cannula fio to 40% niv what will be the yeah niv will be 100% and cpap is nothing but continuous positive airway pressure this is not a oxygen delivery device this is a mode of ventilation okay all right moving on to the next question what is the size of the iv cannula this is asked almost every other exam every other exam they will ask you about iv cannulas colors and sizes okay very good so most of you are getting this correct so this is our pink iv cannula okay yes dr baby i will explain the hfnc mechanism in the end when there is some time i just want to make sure that you guys know all the questions asked previously in ini cet so that's why i'm hurrying through it okay so whatever is the explanation part unrelated to the question i'll do it in the end okay all right so 59% of you have gotten this correct so this is 20 gauge what is the color of 16 gauge starting off with 14 gauge color is orange okay 16 gauge is gray 18 gauge is green 20 gauge is pink and 22 gauge is 22 gauge is blue 24 gauge and 26 gauge 24 gauge yellow and 26 gauge is purple so all the iv cannulas definitely you should know the answers okay blue pipeline and ot is for which anesthetic gas oxygen nitrous oxide air vacuum okay this one is the easier one so everyone knows that the color of nitrous oxide pipeline is blue what is this yellow color pipeline yellow color pipeline is vacuum okay and what is the color of oxygen pipeline yes oxygen pipeline color is white what is the color of air pipeline air yes air is black absolutely correct so can we discuss the cylinders also the one that are asked in the exam oxygen cylinder oxygen cylinder is an academy t-shirt remember that it is black body with a white shoulder and how can you remember an academy is the oxygen for your preparation okay so oxygen cylinder is black body and white shoulder okay now next is nitrous oxide what is the color of nitrous oxide cylinder same as the pipeline it is blue okay next sometimes they ask cyclopropane even though we don't use cyclopropane much anyone knows the color of cyclopropane yes orange okay <coughs> and what is the color of air 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 is again black very good okay so moving on to the next question what is ideal cpr okay now the uh, options are here a b c d these are the options that were given this is exactly like how it was given in the exam chest compression 100 to 120 in other words you know what they meant to say they meant they said ideal cpr but they meant the definition for high quality cpr in the exam okay so chest compression 100 to 120 respiratory breaths 20 to 24 depth of 5 cm during chest compression or allowing chest recoil allowing allowing adequate chest recoil a c d are correct a b c are correct only a is correct none are correct and i'll give you 45 seconds to answer this these kind of questions take some time because it's very easy to get it correct but many of you all may make mistakes in this hmm i think most of you have answered anyway so we'll keep the timer as 30 seconds only so in high quality cpr we all know what is the rate of chest compression 100 to 
This is the one that is wrong. What is the number of breaths that we give? Yes, we give one breath every six seconds. One breath every six seconds, correct? So it comes up to almost 10 breaths per minute. This is after intubation, okay? What depth of chest compression should be five to six centimeter. And if they mention this in inches, then how many inches should, be, should it be? Inches should be 2.5 inches, okay? And you have to allow adequate chest recoil, absolutely correct. Okay, what is the uh, ideal site of chest compression? Yes, absolutely correct. No, it is the lower third of the sternum. In adults, you divide the sternum into three parts, upper, middle and lower. Okay, so you will be compressing the lower one third of the sternum in adults. In children, the sternum is small in size, so you divide it only into upper half and lower half. So you will be compressing the lower half of the sternum in children. Okay, all right. So the answer over here is A. What is the use of this cart? Central line insertion, arterial line insertion, airway cart or crash cart? One second. Pool is not starting. Okay, pool start. Okay. So most of you have answered this correctly. This is your airway cart. So what are the parts that are there of the airway cart? Okay, one question I have is why is this not a crash cart, guys? Why not crash cart? Okay. Meanwhile, one is laryngoscope handle. Two is the blade of the laryngoscope. Three is your megal forceps. Four is oropharyngeal airway. Then five is nasopharyngeal airway. And six is your syringe for inflating the cup. Okay, and the seven is your tape for securing the endotracheal tube. So, yes, tell me why is this not three? Please repeat. Three is megal forceps, megal forceps, M A G A L L. Yeah, it is not. Remember, even in crash cart, crash cart is used for CPR. Even in that, you have all this equipment for securing the airway of the patient. But what happens in crash cart? You will also have drugs. And you will also have defibrillator over there. Okay. So that is a crash cart. It has everything required for saving the patient. CPR. All right. Okay. One is handle of the laryngoscope. Two is the blade of the laryngoscope. All these are blades of the laryngoscope. Three over here. This one is your magal forceps. Four is Giddle's airway. Then five over here is nasopharyngeal airway. Six is your syringe for inflating the cuff. And seven is your tape for uh, securing the uh, tubes. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, since they have asked you about this e equipment, they can ask you about some other equipment also. So, can you identify one, two, and three equipment for me? Two and three are almost the same. It's a set. What is one? Yes, very good. One is central light, or it can also be called a CVP light, central venous pressure monitoring light. Okay. Most common place where you put the central light, right IJV. What is two? Could you be? It is not epidural set. This is the line that you put, and uh, basically you put it by first you put the needle, selling the technique, then put the guide wire inside, then remove the needle and advance this cannula inside. And this is the transducer that is attached to the entire thing. Okay, this is an invasive arterial pressure monitoring line. Okay. Where is the, what is the artery that is most commonly cannulated for invasive arterial pressure monitoring? Yes, it is your radial artery. Very good. Okay. You find a patient lying unconscious while jogging in the morning. What would you do? Check carotid pulse, CPR, call for help, shock if available. Call for help, check pulse, do CPR, do not do anything, observe. This is one of the questions that they asked, which I found as a very, very stupid question. Uh, honestly, like sometimes they ask ask you such obvious questions. You are like, "Kya hai? Ye kyu puch rahe hai? Mujhe mujhe aata hai. Itna to basic aata hi hai." Okay? So if you get these kind of questions in the exam, then um, it's your luck. But okay, still many of you all have answered it incorrectly. Okay.
okay tell me guys why most of you have answered it as b and not as a why will you not shock if it is available see no don't worry about scene safety and everything over here they have simply asked you what are the things you will do they have not asked you what are the what they have never mentioned over here what is the order in which you will do that okay yes absolutely correct ravi's question is correct there is no order of things they are just asking you what you will do and what you will not do i'll show you a question similar question in which they have asked you the order just uh, see this one okay a 66 now answer this question in this they have particularly asked you the order a 65 year old man during his morning walk suddenly clutches his chest and falls to the ground he is sweating profusely and he is not responding the most appropriate next step in management is call for help check for pulse open the patient airway begin chest compressions now answer this question so here what are they asking you they are sort of asking you the order over here okay isme bhi they have made one gadbad in the question they have not given the verify scene safety option at all okay ideally you should first verify scene safety then you have to check for the patient's response okay so that is already being done over here patient is not responding so response is not there after this you will call for help so they are not yet called for help so the next step you will do over here is call for help and after calling for help you will check for pulse and respiration correct so here they have already said that he is sweating profusely not responding so you will check for carotid pulse all right so now you all understood how to answer these kind of questions here don't overthink the answer here they are simply asking you what all would you do not what is the order in which you would do things so if shock is available why have i mentioned this specifically because in many areas now you get automatic external defibrillators even normal people can use it it's there in theaters in airports everywhere just break the glass put the aed pads like indicated and apne aap it will shock okay so that is the answer over here all right what is the correct concentration of adrenaline given through these routes so this was one of the questions asked in last year's november ini cet this is a little difficult question so you have to match the root with the correct concentration of adrenaline If no one knows this answer na i can see the way you guys have answered only 20 30% in each question option ki kisi ko nahi aata hai answer so don't worry i have made this table for you which is the correct table so i am and sub q both you will give adrenaline 1 is to 1000 iv you will give it as 1 is to 10000 and epidural as 1 is to 2 lakh okay so this is your order your um, adrenaline concentration in different modes okay so please remember this this is very important for your exam they may ask this again in the exam because they have already asked before okay all right the appropriate size of lma in a 25 kg child is so again i think most of you don't know the sizes of the lma so uh, combat i didn't understand your question table and indication of adrenaline analysis okay so this is your sizes of the lma that you have to remember for the exam i have always given very nice trick for remembering just remember size 1 size 3 and size 4 size 1 is used in the smallest human being it is the smallest size lma so used in the smallest human being that is a newborn who is less than 5 kg okay size 3 is used in 3 ke aap aage just put zero so in 30 to 50 kg and size 4 in 50 to 70 kg 
these are the adult sizes now if i ask you in 25 kg child you know that size 3 will not go one size smaller than size 3 will go so that is your size 2.5 okay all right so next question over here a young male patient is posted for inguinal hernia surgery on inserting spinal anesthesia he collapsed suddenly his pulse is feeble and bp 60 by 40 the most appropriate next step in management of this patient is administration of inotropes administration of vasoconstrictors chest compressions or iv fluid bolus again most of you are answering this wrong oh okay shivam brother this is the iv uh, adrenaline table okay don't worry you don't need to write it write it anywhere at the end of this class you will get a pdf which you can download so you don't need to write all this okay <clears throat> so tell me guys why is this happening over here this you have given spinal anesthesia and he has collapsed after spinal anesthesia so his bp has gone down after spinal anesthesia why does this happen this is your these are your lumbar nerves these are your sacral nerves over here okay this is your spinal cord the drug is spreading in this area this entire area the drug is spreading so what is happening over here your lumbosacral nerves are getting blocked now do you remember your sympathetic outflow your sympathetic outflow comes from your thoraco lumbar spinal nerves correct am i right so if you are blocking the thoraco lumbar spinal nerves there will be a block in the sympathetic outflow correct so your sympathetic system is responsible for maintaining the blood pressure so what will happen your blood pressure will fall so what is the problem over here the problem is you have blocked the sympathetic system leading to vasodilation so how do you correct the problem you give vasoconstrictors so that is your more correct answer i'm not saying iv fluid bolus is wrong we do that clinically but the more correct answer is to treat the cause the cause is there is a block of the sympathetic system and there is vasodilation so you need to bring back the vasodilation so you vasoconstriction so you give vasoconstrictors okay so you will give vasoconstrictors actually clinically we give both vasoconstrictors and iv fluid but suppose i have only one option i will go for vasoconstrictor okay all right which of the following this is super easy which of the following induction agent is used not sued to produce a street fit person post surgery okay propofol midazolam alfentanil or thiopentol yes abhishek even if i have to answer the next step in management my next step will be giving vasoconstrictors only okay how much of a fluids i give fluids will only fill the peripheral system of the veins i have to constrict the vein so that the venous return comes back to the heart okay all right sorry this is the question so a is the answer over here propofol they are basically asking you what is the best street fit person for surgery so they are asking you what is the best induction agent for day care surgery okay so in day care surgery what will you prefer in day care surgery you will prefer to give propofol because the patient will come out of the action of propofol quickly there will be no side effects and best is it is anti emetic in nature okay mulai there is uh, there was a class in the morning at and now we have the sinai ct class and at 6:30 pm we have a clinical case scenario class okay all right what is the best method of securing airway in a patient with polytrauma with cervical spine injury tracheostomy supraglottic airway insertion intubation with mils or cricothyrotomy okay yes maki so if you are asking me mils that is only the part of the question okay so anyone what is the full form of mils mils is 
not mother in law it is manual inline stabilization okay manual inline stabilization so in that what will i do anyone with cervical spine injury suppose i have the injury the doctor will come and the person who is intubating will be standing at the head end there will be another person standing in the front over here who will hold my head from both sides head and neck so you stabilize the head and neck like this so that during intubation the head does not get extended or flexed okay so this is called as manual inline stabilization used for cervical spine injury to further uh, prevent the uh, cervical spine to get damaged okay all right which of the following is a true statement regarding pediatric procedural sedation while inducing deep sedation apnea can occur moderate and conscious sedation is enough for bone marrow aspiration fracture reduction can be successfully performed with iv midazolam urethral catheterization for voiding cystourethrogram requires sedation with iv fetal Okay, very good. So most of you have answered this correctly. So when you give deep sedation, you can have, get apnea. Okay, bone marrow aspiration, very very painful procedure. You cannot give moderate sedation. You have to give general anesthesia. You are going to insert a needle and push it into the iliac crest and get a aspirate. Okay, so it's very very painful. Fracture reduction again requires GA and urethral catheter catheterization. You don't require any kind of. Um, sedation for urethral catheterization in children it's very it's not painful at all okay all right anesthetic agent with minimum mac among the following is sevo des iso or nitrous oxide abhishek will this inict have multiple choice or single choice i think mostly they are moving towards single choice answers only uh, they are trying to uh, make the neat fg pattern as well as ini cat pattern standard so i think it will be single choice only in fact in the last two attempts ini cat questions have not been that difficult if you have done your portion properly you will be able to answer those questions easily okay so isoflurane is correct can you guys quickly tell me the mac of all these agents Sevo fluorine mac, sevo fluorine mac two, des fluorine mac six, iso fluorine one point four, nitrous oxide hundred and four, and acha methoxy fluorine was in the options. So methoxy fluorine is me is one and point one six. Okay. Now, if you guys cannot remember the mac of the agents, I have on YouTube one video. Just type my name, Mac, Mnemonic, and Janvi, and watch it at 1.5 times the speed. You will always be able to remember the Mac of all the agents. Okay, it's not at all difficult. It's very easy to remember. Yeah, your Mahi SD is a good mnemonic, but suppose they ask you what is the uh, Mac of Halothane, then Mahi SD is not going to help you. Okay, I have given you exactly how to remember the Mac of each of the agents. All right. The mark of the anesthetic agent is closely related to efficacy, effectiveness, potency, or half life. Chalo, chalo, jaldi. These are easy questions. Easy questions have to be answered quickly so that we can move on to the more difficult ones. Okay. Yes. So. Mac of anesthetic agent is no no it's not a one hour session I'm going to finish it within the next five minutes only because I also want to save your time okay all right so Mac of anesthetic agent is closely related to its potency the lower the Mac the higher is the potency of the agent okay all right which anesthetic has the least action on GABA receptor thioketamine propofol or midazolam.
should we reduce the timer to 15 seconds for the single line of questions okay all right so i'll end the poll right now the answer is ketamine okay so ketamine has minimum action on gaba receptors because it acts on nmda receptors correct okay it is an nmda receptor agonist or antagonist okay anesthetic agent known to cause pain on injection ketamine etomidate therpendrone propofol yes it is a nmda receptor antagonist okay pain on injection has only one answer and that is propofol please don't mark any other answer your different different books give different different types of answers in fact even in miller's etomidate is given in one place and propofol is given in one place but propofol is the one that we use most commonly and that is why propofol is the one that causes pain on injection the most okay so it, yes abhishek in many places it's given as, as etomidate also in many places as propofol but we use propofol left right and center so go for the more common answer okay pain on injection is caused by propofol inhalational agent which causes maximum global warming sevo iso halo des hmm. why have most of you all marked it as halo thin what produces greenhouse gas effect greenhouse gas effect deletion of ozone layer yes it is desflurane not chlorofluorocarbons i am talking about anesthetic agent it is desflurane which produces greenhouse gas effect and depletion of ozone layer and all that contributes to global warming so your answer is green uh, your answer is desflurane okay local anesthetic acts by blocking sodium gated channel chloride gated channel potassium gated channel calcium gated so simple one liner questions mein you guys are making mistakes <clears throat> okay so everyone knows the mechanism of action everyone does not know people only know 75% of you only know that the local anesthetic acts by blocking sodium gated channels yes and it blocks the sodium gated channels from inside what is the most important uh, feature of the uh, so of the local anesthetic that helps in its action quick action and fast onset of action and more potent yes lipid solubility absolutely correct the more lipid soluble it is the faster it will act okay what is the volatile agent with least blood gas partition coefficient iso des enfluorine nitrous oxide अब मुझे से लग रहा है कि तुम लोग ने प्लस कोर्स किया है या नहीं किया है ब्लड गैस पार्टिशन कोएफिशिएंट के बारे में यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ओनली वन गैस एंड दैट इज द वन दैट हैज द लीस्ट ब्लड गैस पार्टिशन कोएफिशिएंट ऑफ 0.45 एंड दैट इज डेस्फ्लूरिन दैट्स व्हाई डेस्फ्लूरिन इज द फास्टेस्ट इन ऑनसेट एंड द फास्टेस्ट इन रिकवरी आल्सो ओके दिस इज द ओनली क्वेश्चन दैट यू नीड टू नो अबाउट ब्लड गैस पार्टिशन कोएफिशिएंट so this is your blood gas partition coefficient i know des and nitrous oxide are very close to each other but answer is des fluorine okay all right two regarding capnography is measures carbon dioxide in lung used for confirmation of tracheal intubation phase 4 is inhalational phase all of the above are correct just five more questions will be done in three more minutes okay so sharing the leaderboard with you guys till now shivam has got 17 out of 22 then maki and then shivam brat okay so the answer is all of the above are correct okay so if you see the capnograph this is phase 1 inhalational phase then you start expiring so this is the phase of the expiry from trachea and tracheobronchial tree that is your phase 2 then phase 3 is alveolar expiration or alveolar plateau phase over here the expiration will finish and the next phase that is phase 4 again the next inspiration starts okay so this is your 
कैप्टन ग्राफ यूज फॉर कंफर्मिंग ट्रेकिल इंट्यूबेशन यस एंड मेजर्स कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इन द लंग यस ओके और ट्रू रिगार्डिंग पल्स ऑक्सीमेट्री आर ऑल एक्सेप्ट नेल पॉलिश कैन अफेक्टेड मेजर्स चेंज इन एब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ टू डिफरेंट वेवलेंथ्स ऑफ लाइट मेजर्स पल्सिटाइल आर्टीरियल ब्लड सैचुरेशन मेजर्स पल्सिटाइल आर्टीरियल एंड वीनस ब्लड सैचुरेशन Okay, so most of you have answered this correct. We do not check the venous blood saturation; otherwise, we will get the wrong oxygen levels in the blood. Okay, so we always check the arterial blood saturation only. What is the name of this principle? What is the name of this principle in which we measure only the pulsatile arterial blood saturation? Called no Beer-Lambert law. This is Beer-Lambert law. measure the change in absorption of two different wavelengths of light is beer lambert law okay what is the principle this called this is called as plethysmography in which you are looking only at the pulsatile arterial blood saturation okay all right bradycardia is seen with midas atropine dopamine scoli Okay, so bradycardia is seen with succinyl choline. This answer has this question has been asked many times. I have also explained this many times. Succinyl choline will go and act on the receptors of the heart just like acetyl choline, and it will cause a parasympathetic stimulation, causing bradycardia. Okay, a child with liver failure is planned for surgery. Which agent would you prefer? Now let me tell you for maintenance of anesthesia. Many of you all end up thinking only about the induction of anesthesia, but I'm also asking for the maintenance of anesthesia. Okay. फिर से सबने गलत किया. Okay. So for liver, brain, and cardiac surgeries. the agent of choice is always isoflurane and that's why i have written over here maintenance of anesthesia okay ayush atropine is the treatment for bradycardia atropine causes tachycardia it is the treatment for bradycardia okay and in child if i'm talking if i would have mentioned induction of anesthesia you would have answered it as sevoflurane but i have clearly written over your child has liver failure you have to maintain blood flow to the liver what is the agent for the entire surgery for maintenance of anesthesia so that is isoflurane so these are your trick questions asked in the exam if they would have asked for induction you can write the answer as sevo okay okay then last question for today easy one a 40 year old woman may underwent surgery and recalled events post waking up from anesthesia which monitor is used to check awareness under anesthesia pulse oximetry color doppler etc co2 or bis and with this i'll show you guys the leaderboard so you saw in anesthesia they will ask simple questions only but even in simple questions you guys are overthinking and making mistakes so please don't do that in the exam don't overthink whatever you have read just answer according to that okay yes absolutely correct so this is the bis monitor that is used to check awareness under anesthesia full form of bis is nothing but by spectral index other monitors that you can use are narco trend patient state analyzer for but they won't ask you that in the exam okay so sharing the final leader board shivam has got 21 out of 26 shivam brat 19 out of 26 and maki 19 out of 26 so well done all of you guys now at 6:30 pm i've kept a class on clinical case scenarios so you guys can come for that if you are not attending any other class and i shall see you in november now okay 6:30 pm all right bye bye